Hi, this is Sharon Vornholt, and I wanted to talk to you today about the eight steps that are involved in the probate process. Now, this seems to be um, a process that is confusing for a lot of people, so I want to just lay it out a little bit and uh, show you that it's not really, really such a mystery. So, the first step in this process is that someone passes away. Um, unfortunately, that is how the whole process starts. So someone passes away, and then there is a petition for probate. Now, how this happens exactly is going to depend on whether or not there was a will or there was not a will, whether they died testate or intestate. So the difference here is if there was a will, uh, most of you are probably familiar with wills. So in a will, you name someone to take care of all of the um, as settling of the estate, the legal aspects of the estate, and they are bound by you know the laws of your state to do that according to your wishes and by the laws of the state. So if there's a will, it will say, uh, you would say, I named this person to settle my estate. Now, in the absence of a will, which happens a whole lot of the time, someone's going to have to go to court and they're going to have to, uh, you know, make this petition for probate. And they're going to have to, uh, someone's going to have to be named the administrator of the will. Now, the administrator and the executor, often referred to as the personal representative, they have the same duties and responsibilities as far as settling the estate goes. They just cannot go off on their own and do whatever they want to do. There are rules about all of this. So the difference is whether the deceased named someone in the will to uh, take, take care of this to handle the estate or whether the court appoints someone, probably the nearest living relative uh, would be the likely person to be appointed to take care of all this. So if there's a will that's called testate, if there is no will that's intestate, So once the probate is open, then the ask, you know, there's a, all the assets must be sold to pay the creditors. Somewhere along the line, there will be a notice to creditors. Different states have different rules about that. You know, they'll say you have to file the notice and then the creditors have uh, six months or however long to file a claim with the estate and get paid. That's uh, maybe, you know, people that have mortgages, they're going to be notified. They're going to find out. But if you just, let's say you're a contractor and they owed you uh, some money then you're going to have to file a claim with the estate in order to get paid. So it, there, there has to be a mechanism or a way for people to find out that someone has passed away. So once, uh, you know, people are under the impression that they can't sell the house until the estate is closed when the opposite is actually true. So in order to close the estate, the assets must be sold. Now, will they always be sold? Not always, because sometimes, the property will be passed down um, by means of a, the deed or a trust or some other way. The property will be passed down to someone in the will. There may be a case uh, when dealing with personal property. So this is another important uh, point. You have real property, which is real estate, something uh, that's set in place, and personal property, which is anything that can be moved. So that might be stocks and bonds, it might be uh, bank accounts, furniture, jewelry, any, anything like that. So that there, you know, there's the two types of property, real property and personal property. So in some cases you can leave, like mom might leave her jewelry to her daughter. So there will be named people. And in that case, that person gets whatever that that piece of property is, whether it's real estate or personal, you know, property. So that would be a case of when uh, the property, you know, might not be sold. Some cases there are rules like if someone is in a Medicaid nursing home, there's a whole different set of rules for that. But you don't really, <clears throat> you don't really need to be worried about that. You just need to know that someone passes away the probate is open, the court does its job. You don't have to be a legal expert in any of this. That's one of the nice things about working with probate. So I like to say that's why God made attorneys. So then the assets are sold to pay the creditors. Uh, once the assets are sold, the creditors get paid and then the heirs 
get what's left. So if you are that family member or that friend or whoever that is, once this whole process takes place, then you will get your inheritance. Uh, less attorney fees, less any, you know, less all the expenses, of course. And then at that point, the estate is closed and any tax returns that are due will be filed. Once again, the, the attorneys know how to take care of all of that, but in most cases, there's going to have to be a tax form filed for the estate in addition to, um, you know, uh, any personal returns. But that's why God made CPAs. You don't have to be worried about that. You just have to know that this process exists. So this, uh, I hope this video is helpful to you in understanding the probate process. And I'm going to do a series of these videos. So be on the lookout for uh, probate, uh, the probate videos. And if you wanna know more about investing in probates, I've got a brand new course coming out this month in May of 2018. Uh, so just look up probateinvestingcourse.com and you will get all the details. And this is Sharon Bornholt. If you have any questions just uh, or comments, just leave them here below this video and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much.